Hello everybody. Uh, so today on today's video, we want to just be doing like uh, a healer basic 2v2 guide, like with all the basics, not going too much on detail into everything, but we want to be trying, we want to, we want to be trying to explain everything that you should know before you start uh, healing in PP, especially in 2v2. This is the 2v2 healing guide. So we want to try to like explain you as, as, uh, as better as I can and see what you need to know about uh, the game is to like not make the mistakes that every healer does in 2v2 okay so we're gonna be starting with uh, uh i will show you in a second i need to share the screen so basically we're gonna be showing uh first first point of the video is gonna be basic position in 2v2 Versus caster with a caster or versus melee with a melee or versus melee versus a caster, etc. So I just, I just I took some clips so we can watch them and like explain them better, and uh, so you guys understand. Positioning in two v two, it depends all about the comb you're playing and the comb you're facing. Because if you if you play like a warrior with a warrior, you play a healer with a warrior, it, de it depend your position will depend a lot depending what you face. You face a mage, you face a warlock, you face another warrior, or you face a rogue, whatever, you know? So it's kind of, it could take me hours to explain every single scenario, but I want to try to like uh, explain it real quick. So basically here I have a clip. I need to open it, one second, five minutes, 55. For example, when you play when you play with a warrior, you play with a warrior, for example, playing with Joe Fernandez here, you play with a warrior and you face a warlock, okay? So this is like one of the matchups where the wa the warrior needs to connect on the lock. So as a healer, what you want to do is obviously try to avoid CC while you help your warrior to connect. But sometimes the warlock is just gonna kite, like you're, you're, like you're gonna see now, okay? So the my position on here, it couldn't be better. I'm just pushing on top of the on top of the pillar where the lock has his port. As you can see, he has port there. He used port to get away from the warrior, but I'm here to help my guys. So what I'm gonna do, or what a healer should do to help your teammate to connect, especially warriors that can struggle a bit into locks to connect, you just need to help them with your CC I'm a druid, for example. So I'm a druid. I could wild chest root him while in bear form. I could roar him. I could master or bass. In, even in clone, you actually can afford it, you know? So here on this clip, I roar him. Then I will roar. Then I will display whenever I hit it. And he's going to be able to connect. Now, as you can see, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm a still on top of his port. And this is really important, especially with a warrior, because you know the warlock unless he replaces the port in a different pillar but if he will have to cross the whole map he will he wants to kite the water all game so he will port in 20 seconds you will see he will port again and then i will i will be able to help my water again it's really important that you're here as well because the water could just intervene to connect from here to there instead of using a charge or a leap and waste mobility for no reason when you can actually help him with like a simple intervene so you will see now the war, my water is popping every city. That means the lock wants to like get away as soon as he can. Whenever he is port ready, it's on a port here. As you will see, three, two, one, it's on a port now. You will see. Port, and I'm here already to help. So I will root him, full root, and he's stuck here. Then I, then I try to like be online on my water so we can intervene, but he doesn't need it, I guess, because he's rooted. So he connects for free. And we get all the pressure. Now the now the warlock is stuck and he cannot really move. So basically, that's how you should play as a healer. It doesn't matter what healer you play, with a warrior or with a melee into a caster when he needs to connect. That that can be an elemental summon. That can be a lock, uh, and what he uh, and kind of a mage too. By the way, so as a mage, you need to be careful because doing this can make you like tank some CC. You know, dragon breath into polymorph, or use a polymorph when he fakes all your shit. You know. And you want to say, yeah, but you're a resto druid, so it's kind of easy. Yeah, but for example, as resto salmon, you can easily root him. You can easily root him on the port as priest. You can feed it or chastise or stun it. You play stun. As holy pala, you can even blind it or stun it if you want. Uh, as mishibu, you can inca, bring leg sweep. And I don't know if I forgot anything. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, so that's basically what you're supposed to do when you play 
when a melee kind of versus a versus a caster, you know, versus a, when a melee that does PB and all you need to help, all he needs to 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 do to win the game is just have up them on the guy like a water, you know. So we want to be showing the next clip now. That is, um, uh, for example, when you I play with a warlock as a rest of summon versus a DH. So this is this is kind of uh, one of the one of the mistakes. One of the biggest mistakes people actually do when they get trained, okay? I'm gonna be showing. I couldn't find a better clip, but I think it's, I'm, I can explain it really good. So basically, before you show the video, um, what you want to do as a healer when you play with a caster versus, with, versus a melee, so you're getting trained and you're playing with a caster, you wanna be saying, okay, but yeah, but if I don't kite the melee, I'm just gonna die. True and wrong, because if you kite around the pillar, sure, the DS might not connect, but your lock will not do damage. Your caster is not gonna do damage because you're using the pillar to line to line uh, to like uh, get away from the melee, but the melee is chasing you, so the melee is lining your uh, your teammate as well. So that means nobody's doing damage, and in the long run you will lose because once the melee connects, you're just gonna die, and your 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 uh, caster needs some ramp up to like kill people, you know. So. Unless you are 100% dead, you should just be on your uh, teammate line, like I'm doing right now. Right now, look, I have every single seed in the game. For me, there is no reason to like go around the pillar and kite in wolf with slows. There is no reason for, to do it. I have cities, my log has damage ready. All I need to do is stay, uh, stay in the middle of the map. I can take the gate. I can even use the pillar for a second, but then once the DS connects to the pillar, I should get out instantly like I'm gonna do now. You wanna see? I use my Arden on my wall because it's every single city from the DH. I wanna try to st stabilize a bit, and then I wanna go to the pillar to try to cast. He reversed the route, and now, as you can see here, the DS run to the pillar. That's bad because it's lining my lock. So what I did is just insta get away from the pillar. So my so the DH, if he wants to keep the pressure up, he needs to leave the pillar and connect to me to do damage or to my warlock. That means he, my warlock will be do, will be able to do damage. And that's basically, that works in threes as well. When you play with casters, you cannot use the pillar uh, to survive unless you're, you know you're actually gonna die. And that's not only be, uh, for your teammates to do damage because you want them to peel you, you want the war the 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 lock to peel you to peel the demo hunter. If you're in the pillar, he cannot cast fears for free, because the DH could abuse the the corners just to line fears, you know. So that's why being open field when you're getting trained is really good when you play with casters. But I couldn't find a video for Millis, But let's say I was playing with a with a warrior right now, basically. Then that changed completely. The position changed completely, and I want to tell you why. So you don't have to line anybody. When you play with another melee, all you need to do is to give the melee uptime. And what you should be doing, you're getting trained, and your melee is training my melee. You just need to run away from the other healers. So the other healer is like in that corner, and let's say this is a water that is training uh, that is playing with me and is training the DS. So what I need to do is to run to the opposite side of the map and use the pillar and and just play around it. So the druid needs to like uh, come closer to us, you know. And then my melee can actually swap on him more for more free instead of uh, being like uh, max max range in the whole game. But basically, when you play melee versus melee, all you need to do is to survive. How do you survive? Abusing the pillar. You don't need to stay in the middle of the map all the time, you know. Especially a like Shaman, Druid, Monk, where you can actually abuse the pillars. Especially Shaman and Druid, that you can use forms to like swap, uh, is, to, is to cut around the pillar. So yeah, and that, that's kind of all. Like all depends, the position in 2v2, all depends about, um, all depends about like uh, the combo you play and the combo you face. If you play with casters, try to be in open field, unless you want to die 100%, then you go to the pillar and survive. You play melee versus melee. Try to like run away from the oppo the enemy healer when you're get, you're gonna get in train, and yeah, try to bait the enemy the enemy DPS behind pillars so that your DPS can help. And if you're playing versus a caster, I recommend you to play always offensive. If you play with a melee versus a caster, try to your try to help your melee to connect to the caster, and that's all. It's basically all. This could this could change for the next expansion. Who knows? Maybe. So we want to go to the next point now. 
what enemy cities to track and how to react to them. This is, I'm gonna try to explain it as quick as I can. So basically, when I'm to track them, which is with the Omnibar, so we're gonna go to the add-on Omnibar, uh, free Omnibars, okay? Because uh, my UI is, uh, uh, I have like kicks here, I have some cities up and some other cities down. But I'm just gonna go like class for class and tell you quick what you should be tracking. That is important to track. For example, uh, as a healer, you don't really, unless you're like super experienced, you don't really want to track, track like uh, defensive cities, like for example, anti-magic seal. I mean, it is fine to track this because you can avoid like magical damage for like chastise from priest, fear, hots from paladin, hex from shaman, clones, you know, all this shit. So yeah, I mean, first of all, you should be tracking offensive cities from DK. You should be tracking, I'm gonna show you now, uh, Let's let's talk first about the about the offensive cities. Basically, people play on holy now, so you have uh, abomination limb. Abomination limb is a two minute city. You should have you should make sure you track this city, even though it says I don't track it now because I have an om other omnibar, because it's one of the strongest cities in the game right now, and you just need to play around it. Like DK, holy DK has cities every minute, but every two minutes they pop this with the other city and they completely destroy you. Then the other city, I don't track it, but you can uh, easily see it on the buffs. Uh, is the the transform the pet transformation? So basically, he makes his pet uh, big, and that's the mi one minute pop. So basically, from DK is mostly track abomination limp, and the pet transformation thingy that I don't have it on this. I don't know why, but you should be tracking it for sure. Plus the kicks, you should track uh, mind freeze. That's a range kick. Strangulate, I have it on the other uh, se on the other Omnibar. And uh, what is it? And Death Grip. Death Grip that I have it tracking on the other Omnibar. That's basically what you should be tracking about the uh, Demon Hunter. I mean, about DK, sorry. From uh, and Stun, sorry. Uh, I don't know what is it. The Strangulate. Basically, stands, Kicks, and Cities. So DK is the Kick, Mind Freeze. Then you have a Strangulate, that is a Silence. Then you have a uh, Asphyxiate that uh, is, uh, I don't know what is it, here. Then you have Death Grip, and then the Abomination Limb, basically. Demo Hunter, Stance, Fellow Option, this group that is a kick. Uh, you, should you should track Impression as well, and um, and I don't even track Meta, because uh, like in Shadowlands, the, you just can reset so much. And your Omni, Omni series, is, there is so much CDR in the game, so I don't even track meta, but you can even track I-beam so you can stop it. And that's all. Druid, uh, you should track Feral Frenzy, I track it on other Omnibar. Feral Frenzy is a really strong CD these days, so make sure you track it. It's really important. Bass, you stop with CC. And uh, Berserk, Berserk from Ferals, it is really overpowered now because of the force set, so make sure you track it. And even though it's, it's not three minutes exactly, it could be two minutes because they reduce it by spending combo points with the force set. And then the kicks. So a school bus, solar beam, and all this shit, you know. Hunter, uh, you should track stun, scatter shot from MM, uh, Truce from MM, a freezing trap, of course, kick from survival hunter, kick from BM and uh, survival, uh, BM, sorry. MM and uh, survival, uh, MM and BM Hunter, sorry. And double tap from MM. And what is the coordinated assault from survival here? And that's all. And you should be tracking aspect of the wild that is for BM Hunters. Basically, you track every single offensive city from mage. You should be tracking blink, of course. You should be tracking a counter spell. I don't, I don't think, sure, of course, I was talking about offensive cities, but ice block is really important to track. So you can see if he blocks off if he already block offensive or not, in case you didn't see it mid-game. Arcane power from Arcane. Uh and combust. What is it? Combust and icy veins. Monk. You should I mean you can track this, but the thing is they has to charge it, so it might confuse a bit. So I, that's why I don't even I don't even track it. But basically about wind walk, it is really important to know. They have like one minute pop. And almost 99% of the wing walkers just press every single city on their leg sweep. So every time they have leg sweeps, they have damage. That's basically how every monk does it. Maybe some uh, sneaky monks that will try to kill you in a kick instead of stunning, so you get a bit baited, but that's all. So you basically track 
you basically you don't track bondas because they with the legendary with the unity they proc it randomly all the time so it, it can confuse you unless there is a, like an id that i don't know but i don't even track it because they just pop it on the leg sweep anyway so you track leg sweep and that's all kick leg sweep you can track uh, paralysis uh leg sweep as i said before and ring is really important to track as well so it, it could stop your uh your cast, your trunk from Druid, you know, anything or could, or could fuck you on the path so you cannot connect. From Paladin, basically, I mean, sure, tracking wins is good, but at the same time, I don't even track it because um, uh, there is so much CDR in the game, and as well, uh, they, could, they can program the wins all the time, so your Omnibar is gonna be confused. So I don't even track them. How, when does uh, Red Paladins pop wins? Basically, when they play with a warrior, every two minutes with Necro Banner. So you track Necro Banner from warrior, and you will see it. You track HOTS, even though I don't know if there is an option to track the CDR from the talent, but basically, when an Omnibar, he says that it's 30 seconds left, you know he has Hammer of Justice ready, you know? Around that. You track, you track uh, Rebuke, um... You can track Bobby, you want Bubble, Divine Tolling, they play, they play, uh, they play uh, Kyrian uh, Red, but that doesn't happen. Blind of Light, I track it too, and the other Omnibar, and Bubble, of course, and that's all. That's from Red. Then you go to like SP, basically. I mean, you can track from Healers too, Apo, Chastise, especially. It's really important to know because Holy Press has been really dominant lately. Um, power Infusion is really important to track. Pay two as a healer in case you want to like CC or stop them. Uh, Shadow of Death is fine. Mind Bomb is a CC, but you really rarely see people playing this anyway. Fear, I put the fear on the on the spell ID one minute, even though it's thirty seconds for um, you play sword fear for healers, so I can see when the SP have it. So what I do is, uh, for example, they. I know I face an SP, so their fear is one minute, no matter what, till Dragonflight. And so if I face a healer that is playing Sword Fear, I use, when I see it's 30 seconds left on my Omnibar, I know they have it ready, you know? Either play Sword Fear, obviously, because they're playing Chastise and just understand. So that's why I have it one minute set up. Dark Angel is important to track. Not, not like it's going to be game changing, but in case you want to track it, it's good. Uh, mind games is really important as a healer. Like you need to track this no matter what. Like this is it's really important. It actually is. This is probably the spell that every healer is the most scared of right now in Shadowlands. Silence really important from SP. Uh, Siphon as well because it's a fifty percent mortal strike. Uh, what else? Let's go to the rogue now. Rogue. Uh, let me see. So Shadow with Duel is really important to track. Couch I don't even track it. Kick of course. Kinesor, of course, Shadow Step, of course, Bunnies, Blind Clock Evasion, you should track it too. I don't even track Shadow Dance because there is no point. They are reset with CDR all the time. They have Shadow Dance every 10 seconds almost if they spam it. I mean, 20 seconds, whatever. Um, I don't even track this anymore. I track Flagellation because this is a strong city, even though there is not that many, that many rocks playing this. Sepsis, in case you have an Asa Rock, that is Knife, Bendera. Even though it's two minutes, normally it's like a minute, minute and a half CD. We'll see. Depends on the leg of the play. Smoke bomb, obviously. Even though sometimes when they play sub, you cannot even see it because it's a different ID. So you might need to fix it yourself. But yeah, that's basically the series you need to track. Shadow Blaze is really important as well because, yeah, it has uh, generates extra combo points. It does some bit of damage. Salmon, you should be tracking Doom Wins in case the end has Salmon plays like. Uh, uh, the Doom is laying daddy, but that's really rarely these days. Uh, let me see. Windshield, of course. Grounding, of course. I think this is whatever to track as a healer. Tremor, of course, in case you play Priest. Lasso, of course, you should track it. Echoing is really important to track as a healer because when you press Echoing, the Elemental Summon, you press the spell on the Flame Sock, the Elemental gets completely denied. He cannot Lava Burst, you know. Because the lava burst don't crit unless he has flame shock on, so you dispel it. He will have to re by flame shock. That means the echo and shock will be completely denied. Uh, you can track dispels from healers if you uh, from healers if you really want, but as a healer it doesn't matter too much. Um, 
here, I mean, don't track this, don't need to track this, because of CDR, all this shit. You should track Flesh Crabber, I really think, from every single class that plays Necrolord. Uh, I don't know if I missed something here. Stormkeeper, nobody plays Stormkeeper anymore, so no point. You go to War, we'll go to Warlock now. You should be tracking from Warlock. I think that what is really important in case, like, uh, you're casting a Cyclone as a Druid, a Hex, a Salmon, or, like, you want to stand as a Holy Pala, and the guy, you know he's playing Netherworld, so you can track it, so you can actually fake it, so you don't get reflected on the CC you're doing. Um, you should be tracking Colfer Hunter and Spelllock, because there's two different kicks, one from... Uh, I believe this one is the what was is the the baseline one. I don't remember now. So basically, one is like the lock no the the pet kick one, the the pet from the lock that kicks the the fell hunter normally. I think it's this one and a spell lock is like a PP talent I believe from demo lock. So some demo locks we uh, you just need to pick it as a PP talent to kick like this, you know, because they don't play with the fell hunter. Uh, what else should you be tracking? Uh, you should be tracking a stun from Demolog. You should be tracking... Na, 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 na. These two. This is like the two million city from the logs. It's really important because, especially for Afli, it's really important to track because they do infinite of damage during the, the 20 second window. Uh, Hall of Terror calls are very important to track. Important easy to track, and we go to the last one, Warrior. Track Fear, of course. Uh, charge is not that important, to be honest. It's always good to know, though. Kick, obviously. Uh, 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 uh. Blastom is really good, even though with one lane that they can have basically two. Royal League is really good to track. Uh, Spear of Bastion is really good to track, but you need to be careful in case you're playing with classes without the pets or you get stuck. So instead of being like one minute city, it could be uh, shorter. Conqueror's Banner is really important to track. Wreck, it depends because I don't like to track Wreck too much, which is because of the CDR, so it's kind of hard to tell when they have it. Colossus Mass, really important in case you face Arms Warrior. Stormball, obviously, and you can track War Banner if you want, but that's all. Okay, so basically, that was uh, all the series you should be tracking as a healer. The offensive ones, you can track defensive ones if you want from them. I do, but as a beginner, you should not do it. So now, how to react to their series, offensive series from ADK. It's a two-minute city where it's Abomination Limp. So what you should be doing is make sure in 2v2 you have your Trinket ready. You play Druid, you can play Sword Trunk and press Trinket Trunk. Uh, as a Rasu Summon, make sure you have Trinket Wall ready or Trinket Link. Ma make sure you have Trinket Wall ready because you want to die through Link otherwise. Please make sure you have to Trinket Guardian, Trinket Barrier, Trinket PS or whatever. Holy Pala, Trinket Wins, should be enough till high damp, then you need a bubble, maybe, whatever. Some issue where Trinket Port or Trinket Cocoon, better you can actually port on the go and get away. And uh, I don't know if I forgot any healer, I don't think so, right? No, I don't think so. And obviously, that's you as a healer, okay? Of course, your teammates can help you, but as a healer, this is important. You need to have a city to press every time they press. Maybe your teammate is a baboon and you had to press for him because he didn't press anything before, so you won't have Trinket here. But then it's your DPS who needs to help you. And if he doesn't help you, it's his fault. Simple. But try to always have Trinket for this. And for the for the two minute series, you should always try to have Trinket for them, especially in choose. It's like an scripted game. Timo Hunter, basically the big meta, uh, big meta is that it's uh, one minute and a half, uh, no, it's almost two minutes here, but it depends a lot on uh, the the if they're playing like short meta or not, but basically try to like save your trinket for the big meta pop, you know, like for the when they pop big meta, you will see whenever they pop it if they're playing long one or not. So if they're playing long meta, that means it's uh, yeah, it's not short. Uh, try to save your trinket for this moment. Obviously. Anything can happen and they could force your trinket earlier. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to lose because of it, but make sure like uh, you have cities to respond to the big cities or not cities, but maybe CC. You're a druid, you can stun him, clone him, roll him, root him behind the pillar, whatever. Obviously, you are not alone in the arena. Your teammate can help you, but we're talking about what you're supposed to do as a healer. Into, into druids, you kind of don't face boomies in 2v2. If you do, try to make sure you have cities for the income every three minutes. That's all. Of course, they have a pop every minute if they play Kyrian. 
but with having like uh, your team in cities is enough for that for you uh i don't know make sure you have like a skin as a druid uh make sure you're not in the open feeling to boo me when they have the one minute pop make sure you and your teammate don't get sick at the same time as a summon make sure you have ground ready for the go Priest, Fade, or Guardian, or, or PS, just in case something happens, you know. Pala, Bob, Bubble, Trink, or something, you know. But the, for, for the three minute pop, make sure you have something. For Feral, um, basically every 45 seconds, they have a big go. So they have a big go every 45 seconds, but every three minutes, normally it's two because of uh, the resets, they have um, Berserk. So he says that it's three minutes city, but I believe with the four set, I think it's the four set if I believe if, if I know correctly. Or I don't know if it's the Lego. I think it's the four set. Or the two set. They they, they reduce it every combo point they spend. So it's like a two minute city kinda or two minutes like in a few seconds. So make sure you have your trinket always for Berserk in 2v2. I, I'm just saying this as if your teammate is completely useless, okay? Because like if your teammate is good, he will help you on the berserk. So maybe you sometimes you don't need to press anything. Just maybe press a skin on druid, a wall on paladin, wall on summon after you leave the stun. Just bar it on priest, you know. But that's all. But in case your teammate doesn't peel you, make sure you have cities for the berserk. That's basically all. Obviously, every minute the feral is gonna pump you really hard with feral frenzy. This is a this is a super underrated cooldown in 2v2. This cooldown is super strong. And if you don't, uh, if you don't respect this too much. You can actually get one hundred to see on the stun. So it is really important you, that you kind of rotate trinkets for this, or at least you don't want to die to the feral one hundred to see alone to feral frenzy. But you're in a bad spot, and your other uh, teammate gets CC because feral normally plays with priest, so they kind of do like three to one setups, like CC one and then stun the other guy and kill him. Then yeah, you can die to the priest and the feral, of course, because the other guy is in fear or chastise or whatever. So you need to be careful with positioning. Try to line the priest, and you won't die 100 to zero to the feral alone if he only pops this. If he pops the Zerg, then you have to drink it probably. But yeah, hunter um, as BM hunter versus BM hunter, you need to be careful of this. It's a two-minute city. BM hunter per perma pumps you the whole game. It never ends. It's just perma pump, perma pump. So. Try to like root pets, line the pets, stand the pets, fear pets, whatever, as a healer. But basically, for this, every two minutes, BM Hunter has a big, big, strong uh, pop. That is this one with the ob obviously BM, Beast Mastery, or whatever the fuck the city is. And they pop it with this together and they, they send infinite damage. So, this is actually worth to trinket that go, the trinket the trap, in case they're going your DPS. And yeah, you need to respect the city basically from Beam Hunter. From Survival Hunter, uh, is this is the a strong city every two minutes. I think it's a bit less because they reset it. So I believe they do reset it uh, with I don't know, it's four set or two set or I don't know what it is or I'll, no, I think it's uh, I think it's the Lego the new Lego. I don't know, I'm not sure what it is, but I think they reset it. So this is a strong city. It lasts for long, so make sure you have at least healing or like so many cities for this because it actually does infinite damage, it's super underrated city. You, you try, you cannot really line it, I mean you cannot really avoid the damage because like the survival hunter sends damage from fucking Narnia, so you just need to like make sure you're in a pillar and try to line as a healer and try to don't tank as much damage as you can or at least have CC for it. As a druid you can easily stun him into clone if the other guy doesn't stop you or the hunter doesn't drink it. And if he trinkets, you can drink it too. It's a two minute city. Unless they play the Lego or Force, I don't know what it is. That reset, I don't know exactly what it is, but I know they can reset a bit. Like maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds, I'm not sure. So, yeah, so basically that's, that's all. Uh, uh, from MM Hunter, basically every minute, I have the ID ba uh, bad here, but every minute they have double tap. Say it's 30 seconds, but it's every minute. Every minute, basically, uh, the there is gonna pump you really hard with this ability. Uh, every double tap, you just need to make sure you can stop the cast or line for like uh, I think last 14 seconds or 12 seconds. So basically, when they pop this, they will just uh, it will cast a second time the ability, you know, or it will do, or if it's rapid fire, it will do like 100% uh, additional shots during the channel or whatever. So you need to make sure you don't die to this. 
if they pop this and you are already low HP, you're probably gonna die 100%. So need to be. This is a really important city to track from a MM Hunter, especially now that it's really is really popular. Spec especially in threes. And obviously they can combine this with True Shot. That is a two minute city. This that buffs their damage and uh, uh, the cooldown of aim shot is reduced. And actually the cast is f faster from the aim shot as well, so they can pump faster. So yeah, and I think that's all for Hunter. How to react? You just need to like track the cities and react. Uh, you just be reactive. They pop a city. You need to be. You need to be in advance. Okay, they have cities now. I have this. I have skin. I have bark. I have trinket. Okay, if the if my hunter drops, I mean if my DPS drops, I can press this. You you just need to act in advance because MM hunter could easily one shot you in like two seconds. Same with mages. Mages. In 2v2, normally they play with a rogue, but they could play with a feral as well, or they could play with a healer like a holy priest. Well, you need to be careful of this. Basically, uh, combust. You don't see that many frost machine choose or arcane mages, so let's talk about. Let's mostly talk about uh, fire mages. Basically, combust is a two minute city, but with uh, the knife ability, the shifting power. And the PP talent, I don't remember the name, or uh, the other talent. Every fireball they reduce the, the combust. So basically, in the best scenario for them, combust is one minute CD. So every minute you should spec a big go from the mage, or every minute and a half. This combined on the the on the from the stun from the holy priest or the rest of it, or the holy pala, because they they need to play with classes that stun people. Otherwise, their combust is just gonna get line or purge or just denied. So they will play with classes that stun people like a rogue, like a feral, uh, like a holy palin choose, a rest through it, or mostly like everybody, like a holy priest. If they play with a holy priest, you need to be careful as well with the mind games that we'll be talking uh, later on. And uh, yeah. So you just need to make sure every minute you just need to rotate trinkets basically. One combust, the guy that's getting hit should press a trinket. So for example, you're playing rest of the water and choose and you face holy priest mage. Or rock mates, who needs to drink it first? The guy that's getting hit. And that's what I think is the best, at least. And then the next one, the other guy needs to save you. In the, in the next minute, he needs to save you. Versus rock mates is a bit tricky because you sometimes you have to drink it when they don't pop anything, but they use resonator, so they bait your trinket. And that's a, that's an expansion problem because the trinket is too broken for a comp for rock mates. But yeah, mostly most of the time. You just need to press trinket on their combust. You just need to react to their combust. Without combust, the match is gonna do zero damage. Of course, if he has like a resonator trinket, and it's a really toxic trinket, especially broken when you play rogue mage, then yeah, this this script could change a bit because they could force trinkets without popping combust, then on the combust is just dead. But there is nothing you can do, to be honest. Not even top players can do anything about it. So yeah, okay. We move on to Wing Walker. Wing Walker is a super underrated class in 2v2. And right now, we know Olorog is just the best class in the game 2v2, 3v3, RPG, Minecraft, uh, everything, you know. So every other class goes under, under, under the radar. But basically, Wing Walker is really, really strong. How does Wing Walker work? Basically, every minute, Wing Walkers. Uh, uh, they just want to kill you every minute with leg sweep and crit lego. What is the crit lego? Kiefer's. So basically, every minute, they will tiger palm you into stun, into bondas, and they will one-shot you in the stun. So what you need to be careful about is um, it's about the one-minute pop. Every leg sweep, unless you're super high rated and so you face insane wing workers, some wing workers will try to kill you in a kick instead, just to bait you a little bit, you know? So what you should be you what should be tracking about Wing Walker is not even the images. Of course, this will it's a strong city. You should be tracking the crit that you cannot track a healer as we cover us for it that I can post later on. And leg sweep. Leg sweep and incap. So what they want to do is this. Basically in 2v2, the wing walker choose a target. Okay, let's say you're playing I don't know. Uh you're playing, let me see, Resto Druid or Resto Salmon Warrior. You're playing Resto Salmon Warrior, okay? And the wing walker says on the starting room, okay, I want to kill the warrior. Because otherwise it's going to be really hard to kill the salmon. I want to kill the warrior. So the guy, what he wants to do, he wants to go on the other guy that he doesn't want to kill. So if he charges the force set, he charges um, 
basically he charged combo points and uh, he just charged all the damage. Basically he charged uh, the four set. He needs to get, I don't know if he was eight stacks or ten stacks on the four set. And then after that, the next three abilities will do X more, I think it's 20% more damage. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, basically that's all. So once he has, has that ready, he gets the buff. He wants to, he will try to like uh, pre CC the water so he doesn't pre parry, pre blaze or whatever. So he will get the uh, stun. If the water is not fast enough, he will get uh, a stun. He will get Tiger Palm. He will get the, 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 key, the key first buff that is 50% more chance to crit. He will get Bondas and he's going to get completely one sorted unless he presses CD. So that's how Wind Walker works. He wants to charge the damage, then he's going to ink up the kill target into Bondas, into Lexup, Tiger Palm, and that rushes and kick into Fist of Fury. And he wants the guy. So what you should be doing as a healer is this. When you face a Wind Walker with a healer, you should tell your DPS in the starting room, okay, bro, the only way to win this is if we don't overlap trinkets. So first go, the guy that's getting leg sweep and the guy that's getting hit will trinket and save himself. Next go, next leg sweep, the guy that does, that does that has trinket needs to save the other guy because the monk will have to go, is forced to go on the guy that has no trinket because he cannot react. So the other guy is the one that who needs to help. You know what I mean? So the point to face wing walker is you need to like rotate trinkets properly. Sometimes a trinket is not enough. So you need to like CC the guy on the go. For example, when you play, the, the, the best way to peel is like a, as a Holy Priest. As a Holy Priest, it's really easy to peel a Wing Walker. I'll explain you why. Because you have a lot of CC, Insta CC from, from, from range. As a Priest, for example, let's say first go, you play, let's say you play, I don't know, uh, you play uh, <coughs> Demon Hunter Holy Priest into Wing Walker Holy Priest, whatever. So, um, they do the go on the DS, they get the, his trinket because you guys get one, two, three CC. So you get chastised and the other guy gets income into Lexus. So nothing you can do. So he the DS trinkets. Next minute happens the same. Incap on him. Incap on in the DS into Lexus. And you as a holy priest, you get from the other priest, you get chastised into fear. So what you need to make sure you have for this go because your DS doesn't have trinket, you need to like press trinket, fade, and then you chastise the wing walker and then you can grip, you know? Or like make sure you're close to like stop him with a fear, fear the trinket the chastise into fear the image on the trinket because the monk is on a trinket the chastise 0.1. He needs to trinket to kill, you know? Otherwise, it's just, if he survives the standard, he's just not gonna die. And that's basically with every healer. For example, with Holy Pala, you can like trinket Bob, trinket Big Sack, uh, you know, stuff like this. With the rest of Druid, it's actually hard if you face a good wing walker because you cannot roar through Fist, because Fist will actually block the roar so, and the bass as well. So Druid have a hard time, unless you like do it uh, on his back. Rasha Saban has a hard time as well. How do you do it? You can like trinket. You need to like capstan him, and hopefully you land the capstan in time, but you have a hard time. That's why I play on Lysil, because you can trinket on Lysil the damage and pray that he doesn't crit too much. Uh, Miss Uber, easy, you can trinket income and then ring and they get a zero damage. If you survive the stun, you can cocoon if needed as well. You need to be close, of course. And uh, yeah, that's all. That's basically, you just need to rotate series into Monk. That's all. Rotate trinkets. Make sure you both don't trinket the same go. Paladins, um, basically what you need to be tracking, that I don't think I track here, but you can see on his buffs. So obviously we know into reds, uh, you need to be tracking wins. You need to make sure that when the red has wins ups. But these days they play Necrolord, Necrolord Red. So you uh, you got you need to see his buff. I don't know if I, I don't think I have it here, so I cannot show you. But you need to see that uh, every time he bankist and ha bankist hammer, he gets a buff. That every every time he templates birdie, he procs a uh, divine storm. So. If he has a buff from it, that means he wants to like send damage really soon. So you need to be reactive and heal whenever he used the the next Templar verdict. I think it's Templar, no? When he, yeah, I think so. So basically, they just want to pop. Uh, they just want, whenever they have wins, you need to be careful. That's all. Every two minutes they have big wins. It's long city. It's like I mean, it's two minutes and then the duration is twenty seconds. And you just need to be careful with that. Simple. If it's red, every two minutes, make sure you have trinkets. Simple. They have a small wins in between. 
but then that, that's when your teammate needs to drink it for you in 2v2. SP, you rarely face SP in 2v2, at least only you. Uh, no much to say into this. You need to be careful uh, when they pop siphon. That's your teammates who needs to kill it. Maybe sometimes you can help as a healer to kill it with lava balls from Shaman. As a druid, it's really tricky because if you go to kill it, you're going to get fear. Can maybe uh, Holy Fire Death as a priest. Maybe adjust a Mankister Hammer or just or adjustment from a Holy Priest. Monk, uh, you need to go melee to kill it. Like, really tricky, but uh, yeah. What you need to be careful from SP. In case they play mind games or Holy Priest in case they play mind games, this is play mind games. Priest always will play in 2v2 with, a with stun classes like a Feral, uh, like a Wind Walker or like a Rogue most of the time. So you just need to be careful uh, and rotate series normally on the mind games in case they play mind games. A lot of people play Kyrian Priest. And it's just all about momentum. Like uh, if you have a lot of momentum, they cannot really do perfect setups. So into SP, make sure you have you pre-top the guy, you pre-top the guy before he use silence or before he use psychic horror. Or uh, I mean they have one minute fear, so make sure you're not a melee when they have fear ready. And just make sure you don't drink you both don't drink it on the big go. Every every uh, minute they pop boy form. I mean they can pop two boy forms in a row if they want to, but basically the big go is the first one. They can play surrender of madness to even buff it even more. Need to be careful with the with the big go, you know, and all the CC because SP has a big CC and their damage is kinda is kinda high as well. So SP, if they play with a healer, just try to press CC on the on on the pop on the first pop. Your DPS should be pressing a CC, and the next pop you can press it and you just rotate, you just rotate, and you won't die till high damp. Uh, sub rogue, rogues are. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna explain this, but basically rogues is just uh, really hard. Sabrog, let's say Sabrog plays with a with, with a holy priest. Mm, how to react into this? It's just all about position. And Sabrog, like if you get stunned in the middle of the map and your other team make a CC, most likely they're gonna force your trinket instantly or the other way around. So basically you just need to max range all the time. As a healer, it's really unless you play like a holy priest. You cannot really play offensive into a sub rogue with a priest, especially with the play mine. Is because if you are in a bad positioning, they are gonna do three, two, one, go. Just as one guy, chip shot the other guy, fear of the chip shot, kidney of the chastise. Uh, boom, they get a trinket for free. So you need to make sure you 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 just make the their life uh, harder, you know, so they can actually choke or maybe you can like pre something. You can pre flesh, pre iron bar, pre fade as a priest, pre sack as a pala, pre cocoon, pre wall, whatever. And into Sabrog, it's all about pre, 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 pre. You need to use series preventively. Otherwise, they will get your trinket. It's just, it's just really, it, it, is, it is how it is. You just need to read the go and react. And that's not really easy. It's truly really hard to react to a good rogue. Sabrog. As a rogue, it is way easier. Every minute, around every minute, every minute, 20 seconds, depends. Uh, they will pop a bandera, and on the bandera you need to make sure you have a trinket. So basically, into rogue, into Bende into Asarog, unless you face like an extremely good Asarog, you just need to rotate on bandera. So one guy gets bandera, the guy trinkets. The guy gets bandera. Next go, the guy has trinket. The 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 guy that has trinket that is me that I'm the healer because my guy trinketed the first bandera is me who has to save him if he's in trouble. Maybe he pre blur or he pre wall or faint or whatever the class you're playing with. Maybe you don't have to trinket, you know. But it is, it is your job to save in the second bandera. And then the next bandera, he has cities. Basically, it's just rotating. Because the, the rogue is going to play with a healer, and you just need to rotate. it. Problem is, uh, rogue, uh, as a rogue, does const big constant damage in between banderas as well. So maybe they can force your trinket before, if your position is bad. So you need to make sure you're always ahead before bandera happens. You're always ahead, and you don't have to overpress before the bandera. Because then on bandera, you will die. Especially if they play sepsis, you will just die 100 to 0 on the bandera. You have no chance. Because, the, I mean, on low rating, most of the Azarok just play sepsis. Uh, knife, that means uh, knife uh, Azarok. So you just need to like press a city, you know, on the go. And yeah, and into all the rock, it's just permapump. Blind almost every minute. And yeah, it's lo long range, uh, long range uh, thingy, and you just need to like. I recommend to play Relentless as every healer almost into Olorog and that's all. 
2v2, you don't face as many Savans, uh, DPS, and uh, they use probably play with Chain Harvest, Lego, or use, there's nothing to track, uh, to be honest. Nobody plays Doom Wind, so you just, you just try to like heal as much as you can. And on Rotate Cities, basically, they play with it like a setup class. Into Elemental, all you need to know as a healer, Lasso and Echo and Shock. Of course, Primordial Wave does a lot of damage, so try to dispel on City the Flame Shock and Echo and Shock. Um, Every time he echo and shocks, especially when he combines with Primordial Wave, you know big damage is coming, so you need to be ready to react. Press Cities or Dispel Flame Shock on the guy that is going to get hit, and the LA won't do any damage. Warlocks, 2v2 is mostly Affliction, and Demo versus Affliction. Be careful with the Drain Life with, with Soul Road if he's playing Knife. And the 2-minute City from, uh, uh, I don't know which one of this was, but it's, it does big damage on the 2-minute pop. And from Demo, you need to be careful with the Tyrant. With Demo, it's like a really different because they can play Necro and Knife. But basically, what you need to do is kick a stop hand of Gul'dan, kick the Tyrant, or stop the Tyrant. Whenever he Tyrants, you should be lining, or you should press a CD uh, or CC the Tyrant. Uh, and that's all. Obviously, you can stop it from him getting it better. Be careful with the stance because normally the fi there is one thing important thing about the demo log and it's the first go is always the most brutal one because they do a stun on DPS, stun on healer and then coil off the stun on the DPS, you know? So you just need to be careful uh, on the first go mostly. And then you just try to like uh, help your teammate to connect on the Warlock after the Tyrant, after the big pop, and yeah, mostly all of the demon logs you choose they play coil, so make sure after a stand there is a coil coming, and that's all. Water in 2v2, most of them they play Conqueror's Banner, watch out with the Conqueror's Banner, and uh, track it every two minutes, try to press a CD always. As a rest of Salmon, you cannot really kite this unless you root them, but they will remove the root or use Blaze or whatever. Make sure you have Wall, Druid, you can CC it with any CC. Holy Priest, you have CC as well, just as Fear or you can fly in the air, Holy Pala, you just need to make sure you have Freedom and Horse and run around the pillar, Miss Uber, you have everything, you have Disarm, Stun, uh, Ring, Port, make sure you have Mobility, in case you make sure you have Cocoon, and yeah, Druid, you just can move around, and that's all. We want to go, and I hope you guys have any questions, make sure to ask me on Discord, or... Um, on the description. Okay, we're gonna go to the next one. It took too much time, but we're gonna keep going. Important, no one is going in strat. So basically, 2v2, and to be honest, Arena overall is all about knowing what you're supposed to do. Uh, this is hard to explain, but basically you just need to know what your comp uh, strat is, no matter what you face. For example, when you play sub -rook, when you play sub uh, Holy Priest, you know your win condition is goes you need to do one go into another go into another go consistent good goes you need to chastise this guy and at the same time blind the other guy or fear the other guy or stun the other guy so it, that it's all about that when you play with a warrior all you need to know is you need uptime and to survive when you play with a hunter normally what the hunter the win condition is getting cc on the healer killing dps or the other way around you know uh when you play a dk your win condition is every every two minutes with all your cities kill people when you play as a DS, constant damage, surviving and getting to them, getting uptime, win. You just need to know your win condition. It doesn't matter what comp you play. If you don't know your winning strat, you're you're in you're not gonna you're gonna wanna win most of the games. You need to know your win winning strat. So basically, for ex because if you don't know your winning strat and you all all you do is damage, you, you unless you play like a like a monkey comb into like an easy comb, you, you don't know what to do. For example, when you play Demolok. I mean, sure, you just need to do PvE. Every comp needs to do PvE, but you just need to, like, uh, know that if you stun the guy on your go, you're going to get more pressure than if you don't stun him because he won't be able to stop you. So if you play Sabrock, Holy Priest, and you don't CC anyone, it's going to be really hard for you to kill. So you need to make sure you do all the damage while the other people are in CC. And that works for every class, to be every comp, to be honest. But... Uh, mo some comps the uh, their winning strategy is going dampening and you just win. For example, uh, um, for example, uh, let me think. 
when you play Warrior, as a Warrior, all you want right now is uptime. Once you have uptime, you know you're winning. So you need to make sure you have uptime. And as a healer, you need to help your Warrior to get uptime. That's all. When you play Sabro, Holy Priest, or Rock Mage, you need to make your your win win condition is doing ghosts. Ghosts every DR. Ghosts every DR. As a Sabro, you need to make sure you get stuns rolling, CC rolling, stun the healer, sip off, stun the DPS out of the DB so it doesn't pre anything, and just two constant ghosts on, obviously, between the ghosts, you survive. Same with Holy Priest Rock. Just do a go, a good go, cover the healer, go DPS, or the other way around. And after a go, run. You force a trinket, run. Wait for the DRs, do another go, force another trinket, and run. Go again, win, whatever, you know? When you play like Hunter, you just go in, do damage, you see the healer, trap, clone, or fear off, or whatever healer you're playing with, and keep pumping, pumping, pumping. And while you pump, try to take as less damage as possible. That's that's all about, it's all about the strats. 2v2 is all about the strats. And for example here, or comp, I'm playing here Demon Hunter, Mischiever, or Comp. Basically, uh, how do we win uh, other comps? By just doing damage and surviving. But at the same time, we can actually do good CC chain, like we do, for example, now. Uh, the, the fact that you're playing with a DPS that, that only does PBE, that doesn't mean you cannot do good goals. Like, for example, here, my DS is going to stun this guy, and at the same time, I'm going to stun the healer, and he's going to give us the kill, as you can see. Double stun. And then I'm gonna get an Inca Blade, and the guys just wanna die because of it. Restart on this guy, Inca Healer, and then we finish the game, you know? Even the most like uh, PB, PB uh, comps in 2v2, you can actually do setups. This game is all about setups. If you, if you, you, you can win without doing anything by just doing damage, but on the highest ranks, on the highest rating, if you don't CC the healer, you don't want to kill anything. Or if you don't cover one guy on the go, you don't want to kill anything. You know what I mean? Sometimes when you play a warrior or you play older rogue, it doesn't even matter because your damage is too high. Or a survival hunter in choose, sometimes it doesn't even matter, but that doesn't happen too often into good players, you know? Okay, we go to the next point. Who should be using serious fear versus a panic situation? Healer, DPS, both, nobody, dead. Basically, this is the one of the... This is one of the most uh, important things about WoW, and it's like when you need to react to a panic situation, uh, you just need to have like a, a script. So before a game starts, you just need to talk with your teammate. Okay, who's gonna drink it first? You know, who's gonna press first? Because you know this team can one shot you, so you just need to be careful, and that you guys don't overlap the series. You know, as for example. In this situation, we are playing no boys 2v2, really high rank, almost top on the ladder, and we're facing Wing Walker as I said before, Wing Walker, all they do is like do one minute pop. Sometimes they do like, as you will see now, they pop on me without stunning because this Wing Walker is one of the best in 2v2, and they will get my trinket from a random stun from the druid while, while, they're not, they, while they don't have leg sweep. So the next go, I can die, as you will see right now. This is gonna be a panic situation. As you will see right now, uh, let me see. Okay, here. For example, as I said before, we're waiting for the leg shield, right? But the monk did a really bad leg shield, so I could peel him. I unleash, I unleash the guy. I root the images, capstan, so he doesn't have the time to do anything. And my guy survives. Of course, I'm playing with other rogue that is harder to kill, but it still can die. So now the monk has some damage rolling still. He has images still. The guy press crit on me with Tiger Pump and he proc bond us as well. That means big damage is coming. And here I do a mistake. Here I do a mistake and it's like, okay, he has no leg sweep ready. He proc crit on me. This is the weak aura. And I'm like, yeah, but he doesn't have stun. If I wall here, I won't have a wall for the next one. And look at my HP, what happens from it. I even have Natus Guardian ready. Look at my HP. And I actually almost die and I had to drink a wall anyway. Drink a wall and then I almost died. So that means I won't have trinket for the next leg ship. But my rock does. So what needs to happen next? I reacted to the panic situation. So the next go, if your teammate is good, he needs to help you. He needs to press for you. That means he needs to say blind. His blind is ready. So he cannot use blind offensively right now on anybody, even though he could blind the he, uh, he could blind the monk and then kill the healer right now. He was low he, in, soon, in like 30 seconds when he has skin already. 
So he just need to like save CC for me. So he needs to like make sure he has banish to stun his trinket because this monk, if it's good, is gonna get on the go, is gonna get blinded from my rogue, and then uh it's gonna trinket instantly to kill me. And then my guy needs to react and uh, stun his trinket or do something on his trinket. Otherwise I will die. And as you will see right now, look. My guy wasted kidney on the healer. That's not good, but he knows he has uh banish ready. That means he can actually peel me. So now they want to do a go. How how they do a good go is like they will stun me. I have nothing to do. I cannot immune stance as a rest of Savan. So I cannot fade or fly or whatever. So I will get CC and my rogue will get CC at the same time because this is a high team and they actually coordinate CC to like do good setups. Look, he gets roar and the guy's on attack to cast a clone. Here is where my DPS needs to peel me. Um, I still full HP, but the go is coming. Look, my guy's gonna trinket the roar, kick the clone, he's gonna blind him, blind the guy, the guy's gonna trinket instantly, trinkets, my guy's gonna banish, chips of the trinket. If he didn't do this, the game was over. And this is how you play, on a, uh, this is how you react to situations. For next leg sweep, I have trinket and I will have wall. Probably I'm gonna have to, even though my guy completely peeled the go, the monk still has damage rolling. So I need to like make sure I link early and I just get away from the panic situation. And that's basically how you play to uh, World of Warcraft. You just need to react to uh, panic situations. And that was into a Wind Walker that is kind of easier to predict. But now let's face a, another different comp. Here, for example, I'm playing with a Warrior. Okay, I'm facing Boomy Rogue. This comp is really rare. You don't face it too much. This guy is Benthi Rogue and this guy is Convoke Boomy. Okay, I'm playing with Joe, Warrior. Um, so I get kidney, he gets blind, rogue press dance, the guy press boomy, uh, he press um, incarn with convoke, that means it's every boomy CD, there is no reason to don't drink this. What is gonna happen here? You wanna, you wanna say who needs to drink it? My, uh, my water is in blind, I'm in kidney, who should drink it here? I should always drink it because it's the guy that's getting target, always me. No matter what, in this situation, the healer should, the guy that is getting hit should always drink it. Normally, 90% of the cases, you should, the guy that is getting killed is the guy who should drink it first. Because if my water trinkets, let's say my water trinkets intervenes, I can actually die to the boomy. Or if my water fears the rogue, the rogue is going to trinket, and I'm going to die through. So the pills from my water, there is a big chance they're not enough if he trinkets, you know? So you need to make sure what is the best option. The best option is me to trinket and Joe knows, so he sits the blind and it's me who's on a trinket trank. I trinket trank before they proc my passive as a druid and that's all. Now, of course this team plays flagellation and they can kill me through performing duel, but I know that so I keep delaying the go, I keep delaying the go, I keep delaying, because I'm a druid, you know. So I just stay in stealth, I prepare the go, I'm playing a skin Lego, so I take way less damage and my HP doesn't even move on their go. This is the all-in go, and then after that I get the uh, rallying cry and everything, you know? And you just need to like talk in advance who needs to drink at first. In my opinion, into these situations, the guy that is getting target is the one that should drink at first. Always. I really think it should be like this. 90% of the times. The guy that is getting targeted on the panic situation so is the guy that should drink it first. Okay? Okay, we go to the next uh, point. Classic mistakes on low experience healers. Faking till death. I used to I used to make this mistake a lot. Faking till death this means like you're... Especially in 2v2. In 2v2, for example, let's say the, the you're 80% HP. You're 80% HP and then you're just... Um, you're taking big damage from the guy, they have no stuns, you already left the stun. Sometimes it's just better to tank the kick at 70, 60, 50% HP even if they don't have damage. But sometimes it's just like, you are just faking, oh the guy's not kicking, the guy's not kicking, the guy's not kicking. So you went from 70% HP to 40% HP. You lost 30% HP while trying to fake for 3 seconds. That means you actually tank the kick, you will be, you already fake the kick and you, you will be in the same HP. But now you are 30% HP and you didn't even fake the kick. That means you don't have to press a CD. Obviously, in Shadowlands, this is not the case most of the time, especially in 2v2, because there is a lot of insta healing. But on high dampening, insta healing doesn't do much. So you need to cast, especially as Rust of Salmon, you need to cast a lot or as a Miss for example, you know? Sometimes it's really 
sometimes it's worth to cast uh, to tank the kick early, you know? Don't even if the guy is 80% HP and they have not too much damage rolling, just tank the kick. Who cares, you know? Who the fuck cares? Just tank the kick and go. Unless they have, of course, you don't have trinket and you don't want to get kick. Let's say you get kick at 80% HP. So you cast, you leave the kick and they have stuns ready and they have damage ready, then sure, you need to be faking and be careful because if you don't have trinket, I don't have trinket. They have stuns ready, I get kick at 80% HP, they do damage on that kick into stun, then that's a big problem, you know? But most of the time, so many healers that I face on even on high rating, they just fake, 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 then they get kick after faking for four times, and then they just crumble. They just fucking lose it. They just lose it. And don't 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 even don't even misunderstand me. Even that, even I do that, that mistake, everyone makes that mistake. But some people do it all the time. I do it maybe once out of 20 games, you know? Or one out of 30 games, it depends. But uh, yeah, this is a really important uh, mistake that a lot of healers do. To call using series, using too, too many series. So basically, we've been explaining this for the last hour. And uh, this all knowing about what do you need to press. You just need to, this is, you, you will understand this once you play enough games, you know? So this is all about experience. Because uh, you don't know, for example, as a druid, you don't know if like your overgrowth plus iron bark will save your teammate from dying from uh, I don't know abomination limb from uh, decay. You know you don't know it till you do it. So what you should be doing is you can ask top healers because the top healers know what's enough or not, or you just try yourself. You just go in arena and you're like, okay, two minute city. I'm gonna use this and that. Is it enough? We'll see. We just do it and experiment. You just do it. Is it enough? Okay, now I know it's enough. It's not enough. Okay, then I need to press more. Obviously, sometimes it could be enough because your teammate actually helped you as well or he pre-fainted or he pre-something, okay? But then you need to understand. That's why I recommend a lot to record the games because sometimes you are like, okay, I actually bark it and he survived. And other times I bark and it's not enough. Why? So maybe it's because the enemy healer is doing damage as well on that go. Maybe it's because the enemy healer is purging on that go, so it's not enough. Maybe it's because um, my DPS is low gear, or maybe it's because my DPS pre-fainted or pre-blur, so it's taking way less damage, you know, or pre-wallet, so my iron bar seems like it did more, but it was not in my iron bar, it was the wall, you know. So it's all about testing. It, and... Right now, the expansion is ending, but when the new expansion starts again, numbers are going to change, series are going to change, you know. So make sure you test everything in the beginning. Don't worry, you lose rating, nobody cares. You just try to, like, test. You try to test. Don't worry to using too much series in the beginning. You just try to, like, uh, understand how the game works. It's all about trading series. If the enemy team has series ready, make sure you have a city to react. Sometimes it could be enough, sometimes it is not going to be enough, so you need to overpress. But it is better that you try it in the beginning, because if you don't try to understand why this city was not enough, then you will never learn. You know what I mean? Okay, dispelling two levels versus mates. I have a clip for this that it can work for, like, spammable CC. For example, let me show you. Look, in this clip, this, I, a lot of, like, I'm telling you, 90% of the healers, that is a mistake, okay? So basically, uh, here in a clip, the mage is on a ship by a hunter. What is the best way to dispel him? For example, he, get, he finishes the cast, he gets full ship. A, a good healer will do the dispel I did, insta dispel him. And because I insta dispel him, he can actually kick the re poly because the cast, he doesn't end. But look, now to test it again, let me go back, sorry. To test it again, uh, he gets re poly. Here, you just need to look at the mage cast, okay? Wait, let me see. Let me find it again, sorry. Where was it? You just need to look at the cast all the time. So here, look. This is how you're not supposed to dispel, look. So it's casting, of course, it's one second poly, but it's just to put the example, okay? He gets the poly. A bad healer will dispel when the poly cast is going to end. So it's going to get insta re poly, you know? Look, even though it's triple DR, you get my point. You see the cast is about to end. 
and you dis if you dispel there, you are a bad healer. Really bad. Why? Because your DPS is not going to have the time to stop the Ripoli. So you, what you need to do is this, what I did before, okay? You need to look always, it can work with a poly, with a fear, with a cyclone. No, I mean, not with a cyclone because you cannot dispel it, but look. He gets full poly, a good healer with. Okay, sorry, I saw it wrong. Here. So he's casting a poly, you should always look at the cast, that's why I always have the, the focus frame close to my frames. He gets the poly, a good healer will insta dispel, okay? Of course, it's not as easy. But let's say you're a bit slow dispelling, so you just wait till the next cast is over. So here you just wait and dispel, you know, you're a bit slow. You need to wait till the cast is gone. So because you don't want to dispel when the cast is on an end, like I saw earlier, you know, like I saw here. He gets polymorph, a bad healer will do this. I have dispel already, I'm not, I'm not on global, so I'm not going to dispel now because it's gonna get insta insta receive. So you need to dispel like one second earlier, like here. Whenever he gets ship, whenever the cast is here, that's when you dispel. You know what I mean? If you don't dispel insta, a polymorph don't dispel it till the next global, till the message is in global again, you know? Because otherwise it's gonna get insta repoly. If you guys didn't understand this, make sure to ask me on, on the comments and I will try to explain it better, but I think I did. Okay, then we keep going. We're almost done. Don't worry, guys. I know it's a bit long. Trying to play the game. Uh, there are some healers that uh, you cannot play aggro on them right now in Shadowlands. Happen in BFA as well. And there are some healers that you need to play aggro to win. So basically, I have a clip here. No, basically, the healers that you cannot play aggro as is Miss Sugar and Restory. That means when you go in to do something, you can get punished really easy. Meanwhile, you have healers like Rest, uh, Rest of Summon and, and Holy Priest that even if you stay in, you can actually apport a lot for your teammates. Kick, push, grounding damage, you know. Rest of the Miss Silver, sure, they have CC, but their damage is really low. So you can it's not even worth for you. And if you go in to do damage, you want to fall behind, and then it's hard to recover, you know. So as a Rest of the as a Miss Silver, you just need to, like... Be careful because a lot of healers that play these two healers, they always do this mistake. And I'm going to show you now. I did a mistake the other day. And I'm going to show you what you should not do in Arena, okay? So basically, I'm facing a monk. Okay, let me see where I died. Basically, look. I have no trinket into a wind walker, okay? I have no trinket. I have a skin, sure. But a skin into a wind walker, unless you have a flesh crab up and you're in Berfon before they go, is not enough. So... Here, you you are playing with an Affliction Warlock. Affliction Warlock is not going to die unless the monk pops every city. But if he pops every city, that means I'm not going to die because he has no damage for me. So, right now, I'm like, I'm so excited. Oh my god, they're dying. I want to help my teammate to peel, I mean, to kill. But this is a mistake. As a druid, this is a big mistake. I should not be doing anything. Same as Miss Weaver. I should max in the guy. And I should, if, if this guy was good right now, he will drink it and incap me. And the other monk will come and then I will die in Alexia. 100 to 0. And this is what kind of going to happen. So here I'm actually playing the game. In this situation, when I don't, I don't have anything, I don't have trinket, and I'm this far away from the lock, so the lock cannot even help because he doesn't have foul. And the guy has trinket, the wind walker anyway, he, I should be in stealth. So here I'm playing offensive and I'm actually going to die because of it. I get punished for doing an offensive play. And that's what happens on Rest of Druid and Miss Uber. When you're trying to play the game in Shadowlands, mostly, you just die. You just lose because you don't have anything to, to survive, you know, look. So here I keep, like, I keep getting uh, happy because I'm doing damage, you know. Then here, the monk realizes I'm exposed and I get incap in human form. Once I get this incap, I knew I was dead. Why? I have no trinket. Sure, I have a skin, but I'm in human form. That means I'm going to die. 100 to 0, look. I just die, no matter what. I don't have trank ready. Even if I had it, they have one ring ready. They have double ring ready. I was dead, not even close. Not even close, you know? And he had to even tell him I had bad positioning because I was lining my guy and everything. So what, what I should have done this game? So basically, they got my trinket because they did a go on me. Basically, right now, my guy has hots. He's an affliction wallow. He has big self healing. He can kite. The monk has no damage. And if he, even if he pops damage, he has wall, he has trinket, 
and I can even drink, if, I can even heal him from stealth if I really need. I have bark and everything. So I should just be in a stealth right now. I should have here, here I should actually get in a stealth. I should just go in a stealth like I did, and I should not leave a stealth to have trinket back. Because I know I'm gonna die. Even in better form, I will probably die unless I get uh, to the point where I can flesh craft, you know? So, you can play offensive as a rest of and as a misuver, but it is not worth because your offensive plays are not as impactful as like rest of summon, Erdele, Lava Burst Damas, Flame Shock, Purse, Kick. You can ground offensively, you know? And your positioning won't matter too much unless you face like a rogue or something. Uh, Holy Priest can Purse, do damage, Shasta Sphere, Mind Games, you know, you can recover release with Trinket Guardian. You know, you don't, you you can, you know, you can actually apport a lot of offense, you know, that's why Arrested and Misuber are really passive healers right now in, uh, in Shadowlands. So you just need to know your role. When you, of course you can play offensive though as these healers, of course you can, but you just need to know when. And there, that was not the moment. You know what I mean? Okay, importance of momentum, especially here is the Legacy Summon. Okay, so basically, uh, I couldn't find a clip of this, but there is some healers that are uh, like, for example, Mishiver and Rest of Druid. They are passive healers, but they are reactive healers. You know, so you just have a, you just need to stay in the back, do nothing, and whenever the damage is coming, call a CD or press a CD. Stay in the back and damp, 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 damp. Sometimes you go for an incap, sometimes you go for a bus. When you know you have the pressure or the go ready, whatever. Uh, for example, when you play Dress of Summon or Disc, these healers are really important you play aggro. Because, you, I mean, you, of course, you can play with classes that are broken, like Oblo Rogue, but you can be doing nothing, stay in the back and still win, you know? Of course, that can happen. But most of the time, you want to play like high rated games or you want to play, or you want to win fast or you just. You want to play properly, you should just press W, do damage, and help your teammate to kill, and contribute on the kills, you know? And the important thing about these two healer disc and uh, Rosa Summon, they are momentum healers. So that means when they are under pressure, it's, it becomes really, really hard to heal. Not like Misuver and uh, Restory and Holy Pala. When they're under pressure, Restory can Swiftman and S for a whole HP. Misuver can cocoon you for a whole HP. Um, Holy Pala can lay it down you for a whole HP with wins. But Summon, it can link you, but you want to die through link in dumping uh, versus good, for example, you face a Fury Warrior, uh, they're just going to kill the link and you're gonna still going to die through. Priest, sure, Barrier is really strong, but if you get kicking to kick on the Barrier, because they have the momentum and you, don't, you cannot fake them, you're just going to die through anyway. You know what I mean? So it's all about momentum. If you have the momentum as these healers, it becomes like a snowball. They can, the enemy team cannot go offensive because you're pumping too much damage. For example, disc is, is perfect. When you play disc and another melee that has uh, big damage, well, you, if you have the momentum, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage. But there is another games where you're under too much pressure, you don't even have the globals to do damage. And that becomes like a snowball. If you don't do damage, uh, if you don't do damage, you don't kill. And you're not killing and doing damage, the enemy healer is doing damage to you because he doesn't have anything to heal. That's why momentum is really important. How do you get momentum? It's all about, um, like, um, it's all about comps. It's about comps and, like, doing proper, like, uh, goals, you know. Let's say you're playing with a melee that has stuns, like, I don't know. Uh, a feral, then you just need to make sure you do your go properly. Like, uh, you spump... Uh, Stun one guy, roll the other guy, connect with fear off, you know. And after that, you just keep, keep going. Like, even the, even if the CC is over, you just keep doing damage, keep purging the Ruyu from the Druid, the Ersil from the Salmon, uh, MC the guy low as a priest, you know. Uh, and as well, that it doesn't show here, uh, when you're under pressure, it becomes harder to fake as a healer, and you guys probably know it. When you're under pressure, it's way harder to fake. Because the, any, the enemy team is like, they are not under pressure, so they can actually think more about kicking, you know? They are not like dying all game, like you're dying right now. So they are thinking about, okay, this guy's gonna fake now, so I'm gonna try to hold my kick a bit because I know he's gonna fake, you know? So it becomes way harder. And that's why momentum is really important as these healers. If you're not like ahead always in the game, it's gonna be really hard to recover unless you're like 
extremely experienced on these healers, you know what I mean? So you need to make sure you play as accurate as you can so you get momentum. If you try to play defensive at these healers, you're probably, unless you're like insane, you're probably going to get uh, rushed down and lose the game like fast, you know? You just need to make sure you just contribute to kill. This, I can say Holy Press, of course, as well, but Holy Press can recover from panic situations with Guardian or Flyer or whatever, you know? Even Res Lego. And in this clip, I can show you uh, the drinking time. Momentum is important for drinks as well. Because drinking, especially like, uh, what the hour was it, 1.15. It's all about momentum. You cannot drink when the enemy team is popping every city, you know? You just need to wait for a perfect moment. Like, for example, here. I play with Afli. So Afli is really tanky right now in 2v2. That's a lot of self-healing. But the enemy rogue is playing as a rogue. He used pop Bandera. That means he does not want to have more damage for now. I have every single hot on my guy. They just run behind the pillar because we have pressure and we have darks already. This is the perfect moment for drink. Even though I'm not too low mana, this is the perfect moment to drink. If I don't drink here, I'm never going to drink. I... Uh, as another healer, I mean, it's different. As a Holy Pala, you, if they are running, you could be drinking here as well. You know, you just need to know the best the best moment to drink. It's all about momentum. If you don't have momentum, that means... It, when I mean momentum, is like if your team, if your DPS does no pressure, or you don't help him to do pressure as well, it's really hard to drink or recover, you know? Like, every, it's like... Arena is like a snowball. If you don't do pressure, you're you're gonna you you wanna you wanna lose the game. From the from the first second ten seconds of the game, if the enemy team has the whole pressure and you don't counter pressure, that means we like CC one guy, CC the other guy, and then just keep uh, pumping. You know, like it's all about it's all about momentum. It's all about pressure. Arena is all about pressure. For example, um, uh, this is, I think this is a good example. Let's say you're facing a Fury Water in 2v2. They play Necro Banner. I mean, they play Necro Lord, so they have Conqueror's Banner every two minutes. So they pop every CD. You, you're actually dying because it's a really strong CD with Wreck. You cannot really kite them. How do you counter pressure that? Let's say you're playing Rest Druid. How do you counter pressure that? You press ACC on the Warrior and stop the damage from it. And then that's when you start doing your, your go, your damage, you know? If you don't stop the warrior from doing damage, uh, and you don't stop the guy from doing their go to their perma go, the, 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 you don't stop their pressure, their momentum, you're not going to be able to do your go. And you know, if you don't recover, it's just over. They will have the momentum the whole game, and it's GG, go next. So you just need to make sure you can you press CDs early. As a druid, you can he pops Necro Banner, you stun him. If the warrior is, has one IQ, he's going to drink it. Okay, like, yeah, unless you're playing with a rogue, the rogue has blind, it's on a trinket, let's say you're playing with a hunter that is not playing diamond ice trap. You stun him on the necro banner, it's on a trinket 100%. What do you do after? You just press borders and run around the pillar. Try to cut the necro banner, for example, you know? And then once the necro banner is gone, boom, you send it. You're playing with a hunter, let's say. So you stun him, he trinkets, and then you just heal. And the hunter, what he needs to do, is stun the healer, let's say he's playing with a summon, so the summon is pouring in the druid, it stuns the summon instant into trap and the the momentum is kinda over because the summon is not helping, you know? Summon is to help the warrior to kill, otherwise it's not gonna kill. But if you stop one of them, the pressure is gonna be gone after the necro banner finish, and then you, you do your go after, you know? That's why it's really important while you have cities, make sure you have um, for example, while you pop your series as a warrior, for example, you need to make sure you have your blaze stone ready and your trinket ready. If you pop necro banner and you don't have trinket, you're gonna get CC on it and you're gonna do no damage. And that works for everything. You know what I mean? If you pop as a hunter, you pop, let's say, as an MM hunter or as a mage, you pop combust and you don't have trinket. And let's say you face a rogue and you're, you don't have trinket, you're gonna get blind, for example, on combust, you know? You get blind and you, your whole go is gone. So that's why, uh, and then you will lose all the momentum, all the pressure, because you do, you, on your go, you're doing nothing. And you're doing, no, no, doing nothing on your go, the game is over, you know? So obviously, uh, you can prevent that from happening. You, you can just save your trinket for your own go and then trinket offensively, or you save some immune shit, like, for example, Holy Pest can Holy Ward you on the go, or you can bless them as a water on your own go so you cannot be stopped. Stuff like this, you know. Uh, let me see this clip. 
Want to stay offensive or defensive depends on the momentum. Let me see. What hour was it? Three hours, six minutes, no? Three hours, six minutes. Okay, this is an important clip as well. Want to play aggro, want to play def defensive, okay? Three hours, six minutes, right? Mm, 16. Okay, so right now, look. We're playing. I'm gonna I'm gonna show the whole clip, okay, so you guys understand. So we're playing uh Resto Sama Demo Hunter with a viewer and we're facing Sabrock Disc Priest, okay? That combo is really hard for us because Sabrock completely counters Demo Hunter, but basically what you need to be doing is this while you have series ready, you should play as aggro as you can. Especially when you play Resto Saman and Priest. Okay, as aggro as you can. So basically. Uh, we create momentum and pressure, and they cannot do their goal. Look at look at them. They are just dying the whole game. The priest could be doing damage right now, but the, the fact that I'm pumping so much damage, and my DS has so much damage, and I'm kicking, hexing, purging, he cannot do damage. He needs to heal. Sadomen, Sadomen. Now he's smiting. Sadomen again, Sadomen again. In this stand, he could be doing damage, but he's not doing damage. Okay. Now, they're going to do a go. This time, he's popping dance. He's building. I'm going to get killed now. This is their goal. My guy peels, perfect. We go trinket clock. The guy is on a feed us off, whatever. And we still have cities. We didn't trinket, we didn't press anything, so we just hover the layup. That damage is fine. So we stay uh, we stay offensive, you know. While we have cities, you can always stay uh, stay offensive. Whenever you don't have cities, like you will see soon. <coughs> yeah, for example, here I use an earthen wall totem. Why? Because I wanna keep I wanna stay offensive, you know. I don't want to heal my spend globus and heal myself when I can actually win the game. Even though he has barrier and evasion up, I can actually stop the priest from casting with a with a kick. I want to do now. I kick him. I'm gonna push the penance. Oh, I could. Oh, I actually didn't. I couldn't have the time. And we have seated. We still have trinkets, you know. And we keep doing damage. Now they do a good go. They double feed us, and I get. Uh, it's on a pop boom. And once I see the boom, trinket ground because I don't have wall. And I, I will just press my cities. Right now, <coughs> they force my trinket. So soon you will see, once the DRs are gone, that I'm going to play more defensively. You will see by my position. Right now, I'm DR. They cannot see me yet. So I stay uh, still offensive, you know. But you will see soon, I will try to not stuck with my Demo Hunter to don't get double fear. I root them. I try to get away. Look at this. I don't have cities. I try to get away. Because I don't want them to like get the easiest goal of their life. My DS is gonna get fear and I'm probably gonna get stunned. Look at this. It's probably gonna happen something like this. He gets blind. I have nothing to do. I can't do I couldn't pre anything. I could pre-link, but the pre-link is not gonna do anything. So I'm just dead here. What my DS does, he realizes I'm gonna die. So he use trinkets and ink up the rogue. He's playing a displayable ink up, so I survive this goal, you know. And now this is the this is this is what I talk about momentum. Now, I don't have cities. That means I cannot go offensive. Because if I do, I'm going to be in a bad spot and I'm just going to die. And now they have the momentum. Now it's when them, the priest, should be pushing. Of course, when they recover from this damage situation, like they're doing now, they should just be pushing and doing playing offensive. Now, the stance and the, the DRs are gone. That means they're going to do another go. That's, look at me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually move to be in a, de in a defensive position right now. Look at this. I'm gonna jump down probably or like be here in the in this corner. Because they can kill my D they, they can kill me and they can kill my DS. They can kill anyone. You know? And now is when they're gonna do a go after his stance. They probably wanna do a go now. So I try to deal with Earthen World Totem, even though Earthen World Totem is not enough into this, but I just try, you know? I'm trying to play as defensive as I can. Now they want to go. Fear I and they give me a gap. This is a mistake. This is why they should never do this. They should just do the go better, but they give me a gap. So I just out of mastery flesh of the whole go and I completely destroy them, you know? But if this thing was a bit better, I wouldn't have the chance to do this and we would probably have lost here, you know? And now we kind of have a bit of momentum. Why? Because my trinket is coming soon. So we can, I can actually play a bit offensive right now. My D is press some series. So now I'm going to try to play offensive till... Uh, Till the next king they are the, the the king is coming now so you see you see i'm gonna be lining now because i need to delay 20 seconds once i get 20 seconds 
I will get my trinket back and we're probably gonna win the game. So I just need to delay. What I'm probably gonna do now, I jump down, the rogue is rooted. Whenever the rogue comes to me, I will probably press wall or ground it so I can ground some damage, whatever. So now we need to delay 10 seconds more. The guy wants to get a fear on me into setup. So I will probably just wall now, as you can see. Look at this. The priest, look, this is really simple. What the priest wants to do is not a holy priest, so he cannot chastise and then come close and fear. So he needs to come close to the DH or to me and fear to do the go. He could go, the rock could go on anyone, okay? If he, if the guy cannot connect fear on me, that means I want to be able to priest something before I get trinket back. That means the rock wants to go me and the guy wants to fear the DH because he's on top of him. That means I have to wall here. If I don't wall, the game is over, like completely over. If I don't wall here, GG go next. And the rogue realized I pre wall so I'm immortal, so he decides to go my DH. Because rogues in Shadowlands are really overpowered, and even if you fail, you can still recover from it. And look at the guy HP, he almost died. If the rogue didn't fail the restand, my, my guy died, even though I played the situation completely flawless. But there is nothing you can do. You just need to react and position it good into this. And now we should buy this go. That means I have Trinket back. That means we can play offensive again. Once I recover from this, like it's gonna be in a second, we're gonna play offensive again because I have trinket. Look, I, I push for a hex, flame shock, lava burst. Now I'm gonna try to like probably uh, kick the priest soon or capstan, flame shock again in a second. You know, I'm playing offensive now. I heard them to try to like uh, delay the go a bit. They do a big go on me. I'm probably gonna trinket this, trinket ground because I don't have wall. And then we're gonna probably try to finish the game now. My guy, uh, darkness in between, didn't have to. Uh, and I will try to finish the game. That's how it works, you know? That's how momentum and how to stay offensive and defensive works. It's all about momentum. And staying offensive, sure, I mean, uh, it mostly depends on the healers you play, but it's just more like uh, pressure-wise. Like, if you have nothing into... It, it depends, you know, what comes you face and what comes you play. Some comes will allow you to stay more offensive as a healer. Other comes will, uh, will not allow you to stay offensive, you know, because you're under pressure. It depends all in the on the meta as well. On the meta of the season, some comes you want your DPS takes too much damage. You don't even have the time to to do damage yourself. Then there is nothing you can do. But most of the times, it's not the case, and that's all. I hope you guys understood everything. And now I'm gonna give one tip per class. Basically, this is like. Uh, random stuff you know but i can if you join to my channel on twitch i can give you more and more tips about this one tip i can give you for us is how many choose to be two there is dampening so if you don't press your series early enough your po is probably not gonna be enough and you're probably gonna die through everything so i recommend you to um when you're getting target most of the time try to don't trade your astral shift a really low HP, like at 20%, and trade it like at 80. For example, if you're facing a DK, pop in Abomination Limp, and he gives you a gap to press wall, you just press it on 80 or 90% HP, and don't wait till you're 20% HP. Because if you press it at 20% HP, it's just too late, you don't want to recover because there is dampening, and you just want to die, you know? And then you want to have to trinket, wall, link, ascendance, and maybe it's not even enough, you know? So try to press. Better to press early than press late and have to press every city, you know? As I said, Druid and Misuber, stay in the back, do nothing, equals rating, happiness, good sleep. Do nothing and win. That's what I recommend you to do on rest of Druid and Misuber. In choose and most of the time in threes as well, stay in the back, heal, talk, talk, talk good with your teammates, your in boys with them, and just do nothing and win. I don't play disc right now, but when I face other disc, and uh, a good tip that I can give you, when you pop Raptor, Raptor is the ability that when you press it, you can spam shield, power, uh, power or shield on the guy, you know? When you pop it like instantly and give a shield, don't cast a penance or a smite, because if you kick on it, that means you cannot, you get kick on, on holy, you cannot spam more shields, so you cannot reshield, that means you wasted your whole city, so... Unless they, you stabilize, st stabilize, or uh, unless you recover already, don't uh, don't cast during Raptor. Uh, some like penance or some holy stuff, you know, penance, smite or whatever. Uh, holy priest. Uh, 
I started playing Holy Pest two seasons ago, and I used to do this mistake a lot. I used to Guardian when uh, my teammates, sure, when, when I needed, like I had to Guardian when the guy was dying, but I was trying to hold it too much. For example, I was trying to hold it by pressing one Serenity, but it was not enough. So when the enemy, see, enemy team is popping cities, uh, don't try to like use double Serenity. And then after that, you're like, oh my god, it's just, uh, it, it was not enough. So you, prop, you, you, you pop Guardian, you know? And then you don't have healing, because you already use double Serenity. And then you're forced to cast, and then you get kick, and then they proc your Guardian, your uh, sp Guardian Spirit, you know? So, sure, you can use one Serenity to, to, to see if it's enough. Let's say it's not enough. You just press a Guardian, because they're popping cities. Guardian, Serenity, full HP, GG, go next, you know? And then Holy Pala. Holy Pala, the best tip I can give you is... Try to, um, as I said on Salmon, try to trade cities uh, early, you know? When I mean early, I mean on high HP. If you bop someone at 20% HP, maybe there's a, a magic spell that they have from the healer or from the DPS that can go through bop, for example, you know? So you, the Idifera pops Berserk and is playing with a Holy Priest. Don't Try to don't bop it at 20% because the Priest maybe can kill him with a Death or Holy Fire or Boon. So you can Trinket bop the Berserk plus um, Feral Frenzy at full HP even. It's good trade. It's, every, it's a 3-minute city for a 5-minute city. It's not a bad trade and you have two bobs anyway. So basically, uh, if you pop it too late, that means they can go through. If they can go through, that means you will have to Trinket, bob, Sack, Wins. You pop everything at the same time on one go. For the next go they do in 45 when they have Feral Frenzy again, for example, you won't have anything. You know what I mean? Or when you play with Pala, uh, if it's a Sabrook, for example, um, you just need to like talk in advance or just type on the party chat that you're playing with LFG or no boys or whatever. Okay, I will save you first. That means you will trinket Big Sack or trinket Bob or Bubble Sack or whatever. So you need to like press uh, early and tell your teammate that you're gonna press because otherwise you guys are gonna overlap or you even have to you will have to like press so many cities you know and that's the best tips i can give you probably can i can give you probably more but uh yeah you can ask me discord stream twitter whatever anyway guys i hope you guys uh, enjoy this guide and uh, if you guys have any question make sure to follow my my twitter and, and follow me on on, uh, on twitch and ask me there whatever you guys need Hope you guys enjoy it and make sure to follow and subscribe on my YouTube channel. We will be uploading a lot of content of uh, Dragonfly, especially some talent builds, so you guys can copy them. And if you guys need anything, make sure to like uh, contact me. And yeah, I hope you guys uh, like it. And if I can improve on something, let me know. Hope you guys like it. Peace out, guys. Hope you guys like it. Bye bye.